Just go live. No, I'm just sharing on my own timeline as I've been instructed to. There we go. It's been shared on my timeline. Brilliant. Right, let me just turn the audio down or else it's um, going to feed back. Yeah, maybe it's not working. <coughs> Right, I think there's a, a bit of a delay, but never mind. Right, I'm back for part two. Um, I got myself a water, and we're, we're ready to roll again. Um, I thought this time, instead of just uh, waffling for about half an hour and being camera shy, I'd uh, share you a couple of tips or little things that I, I sort of do every time or things I use to try and um, either speed up my workflow or um, just things that help me. Um, as is um, little things that logic does and doesn't do um so how anyway i'm waffling i'm back into it right so first of all uh, one big thing for me was um <clears throat> as you can see i've got um some audio from my uh, my track uh, here if I, I if i just explain that i'm sure some of you will know some of these tips so uh, apologies but if, uh, if you're just starting out or if you don't know these tips they can you know you can always think off you know they might help you in the long run uh, right, so if I go up to here, there's a thing called snap, which snaps your audio sections to your grid on your um, door. So if you notice at the moment, when you start up Logic, it will be snap to snap region to relative value, which means that you can zoom right in, um, zoom right in, and on the door you can move it around, and it, if you zoom right right in, you can actually get really close and it's not actually snapping exactly to where it could be a mini school off like that and you won't see it if you're far back like so you can not see it but like it's not snapping you see or you can move your kicks and they might slightly be out and when all your audio audio is playing at once you'll um, you might not see it there look but you might hear it so the first thing I do is when I open uh, when when I'm setting up my logic template is I go straight to that and change that to absolute value uh, and then that way what it does is it'll snap to your grid like that so every time it'll snap on the grid and it won't it won't be you know a bit keen either side so you won't um especially if you're moving like large amounts of your projects and lots of samples and files and stuff it's always good to make sure that it actually um, grips right to that point so that's that's one tip that i i'd, I'd like to share with you um yeah, and also you can change the uh, the rate it actually um, what it snaps to, so it can be like smaller, so it can be like ticks and frames and divisions and even bars, so it's a, a lot, you know, so it's a lot, it's a full bar rather than a beat. But um, I just keep it on smart, cause, and then the, when you zoomed in, it, it kind of figures out what you what you're working with, um, right? And then on to my, I've got my notes over here, so I don't waffle. Keep on track, Ollie. Don't waffle. Um, Right, so, oh yeah, another good thing is, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, um, like, when you've got all your control bar at the top, where you've got <clears throat> all your, um, you can customise your settings um, on here, where you can just right click and then customise control bar, so you've got um, everything on there, but there, you can have, like, your time signature and your divisions, and one thing for me was I never really knew how, how long, um, how long I was making my track, I didn't know, you know, Obviously, I knew that it, <coughs> at like 124, 123, uh, 33 bars, it's about a minute. So I used to just kind of work it out by that, by doing it in minutes. But I wanted to be more precise. So what I did was um, 
I figured out that if you go to view up here in this area, I don't have one of these fancy like zoom things where you can zoom in on the uh, what you see on some of these videos. But yeah, if you go up to this view part and then go down to secondary ruler, there we go, and it drops down here. If you can see that, I'm not sure if you can make it bigger, but there, that's that actually shows you the time of your track, so that you can see that that goes on to like sort of you can take your end to a like over here, and then that's five minutes, so you've got like six and a half, nearly seven minutes there. So you can see, rather than having to work out how many beats in a bar to how how long it is and what BPM it is, that's quite a handy thing. Um, also, at the end. At the end of once I've set up a template, I, I usually save it. So every time, so I just go up to file, um, save as a template, and then what I'd do is I'd, I'd just save it in there as as a, a template, and then it'd be how I wanted it. And you can customize it. So if you're making sort of different um, time signatures or different tempos or different settings, you can you can uh, change that accordingly. Right. Um, let's have a look. What's my other tips? Um, let's have a look. Oh yeah, default setting on all devices. Um, so, well, that's what I called it anyway. So, say for example, I've got over here, I want an EQ. So instantly, I'll turn an EQ onto my um, onto my hat and clap loop, which is taken from one of my tracks. Um, is here. So just to save time, um, be more, more methodical. Sorry, I've got a force of habit of moving things around and wiggling my mouse. I shouldn't really do that. So, right. So <clears throat> what I do is instantly when i open like say an eq i'll um, i'll i'll get my settings so if you notice i've um, i've top and tailed this one i've put it on um quite a, a a strong descent and then i've got it so as soon as you open it up the, it's all enabled and it's ready to go there so i don't have to then you know click stuff on and also i think on this one let's have a look just think now yeah on this one I've already got the analyzer turned on so it's um, it's on so you can see the waveform straight away I'm not sure if you noticed but when you open logic it's actually it probably comes something a little similar to to like that so when you set it on it's just like that and then you have to then go and turn things on and start moving around and changing changing them and stuff so <clears throat> that's that's another little tip so if you go to go to that and then save that as your default as you can see I've got a couple saved here already but if you save it as your default and then every time you open it, it default already exists. Um, actually, let me just uh, go to recall default. So then you just go down to save, save as default. There we go. Yes, overwrite. And that can be for anything. So if you've got um, any other sort of effects, if you've got you know anything uh, like what else would I use? Um, so say if you've got, for example, if you've got your favourite um, setting. So say you've got a, a, a favourite. Um, this is just a, a, a compressor, right? Let's have a look. Compressor linter. So say, I don't know, the acoustic guitar one on this one is my favourite and I use it every time. And I, I tend to dial it in from here and around that area and that's they're the perfect settings for, for that. And I'd like to use that on all my stuff. Then you just go to that and just save it as a default. Um, so that's your default then. So anytime you sort of, anytime you open that, as soon as you open it, it should be there. So if I open that now, and then the settings are exactly how I like them, and it, it just saves time as well. Uh, it's quite. Um, I'm sure other people do different things, like you save your channel strip settings, and you probably put all your favourite plugins on and do it that way. But that for me was a, a bit of a time saver, especially with um, with things like. Uh, let's have a look on that. On my kick, I've got a kick drum here. I, I probably can show you already that on my distortion. If I go to my overdrive, I've got. There we go. It's opened up. So the settings I use already are there. So you've got a, a drive of 6.5 and with the minus and the level compensation on and then the tone which is set at uh, 20,000. So that's that's instantly, logics won't come up like that, it'll probably come up as, as something else. But that was my, uh, you know, um, recall default. There we go. So that's that's another tip. Um, excuse me. Right, so let me just turn that off. Let's have a look. Turn all this stuff off. Right, where, what else we got? Um, oh yeah, this is something which is really simple. I'm sure a lot of advanced users will know, but um, I get asked quite a lot um, by people that I, I sort of mentor or help out with the tracks, and they always ask me how how I um, do like the breaking effects, like as if it was on a vinyl and, and pitch stop. So um, 
one one thing I've got to show you before I do this is if you go up to um, preferences uh, audio if you go up to this right if you go into your editing um, on here and just make sure is it um, audio let's have a look can't remember where it was I, I set it up so long ago uh, general here we go editing so in here there's um, a little tick box what says uh, fade tool click zones and when this is enabled what it means is you can go up here and you've got like almost like a shortcut it's like it's like using the audio fade tool but you can just put that up to sort of say like there and then uh, as long as that's enabled you'll see that it's 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 not there now and then as soon as you click on it it's there so you can use that um, there so if that's on you put your your fade area but what you do is in, instead of fade you go over to your um, your parameters here on the on the left instead of fade out volume you turn it to slow down so uh, I've done it quite extreme so you understand it so uh, if you just listen to this I'll start from here and it does like a pitch stop so and then you can have it not as extreme you can have the curve difference so it's a lot more you know, faster You can get some really cool effects if you put your, uh, if you use that as, um, and also use effects on it and do some automation and delays and reverbs and stuff like that. That's, that's pretty cool. So that's that's a good little tip. Which, which if you didn't know about, it's cool. Um, I mean, obviously don't overkill it and put it on everything, but it's nice uh, every now and again just to use it. And it's good for production if you're uh, into sort of like soundscaping or if you're into radio, you can use it as like effects that way. It's just another way of. Um, of doing it right let's have a look what else we got uh yeah um yeah the the plugin manager i'm not sure if um if you're aware of this one and if you're not it really did help me especially if you're a uad user for me this was um, a, a massive um a massive thing for me uh, right let's have a look so if i go into my plugin manager because if you're familiar with them um, with the uad stuff uh, let's have a look UAD. so like my UAD stuff's here right so what I've got is um, when you get the UAD or like when you get the waves there's there's just so much stuff there's just so you know it can be overwhelming sometimes and, and trying to find um, a plugin or some you know anything you're using can be a nightmare it's like a needle in a haystack and by the time you've gone through the sub menus to find it it's a nightmare so I've um, I've figured out on here, which uh, I, I learned. I can't remember where I learned it, but I learned it a few years ago. And it's well, when Logic X came out, it's really handy. Um, you can customize all your own. So if I put here, if I just put um, uh, example, example. So I'm creating a folder called example, which will be there. I can put that to the top of the categories, um, example. And then what I'll do is I can I can search for my favorite or my own. Um, UAD stuff and go to say the pre um, precision delay modulation put that in there um, I've also got what else have I got I've got um, like the uh, uh, BX Brainworks digital I can put that in there and a few others and it just it just speeds up your workflow because then you've got um, all your all your you know plugins in one place so now if I show you if we go to done It'll initialize so now if I go to my uh, plugins here you'll see that exact the example folder they're all in there so the ones my go-to plugins are all there and you don't have to go to say go to UAD and then you've got to go well not the, that one the original UAD as you can see go through all those which some of them are demos and uh, it's quite frustrating when you, you click you maybe click on the wrong one or something down then you've got to find it again so so yeah so you can see what I did was in my UAD they're all the uh, UAD plugins I've got and uh, it's just a handy little thing I use so that's that's another tip hopefully someone will take that and uh, use it in theirs let's have a look uh, what else we got oh, a reverse reverb trick um, uh, I think Alex uh, Alex Powell taught me this years ago when I when I had hair many years ago so well, I'll just do it on the on the kick actually so all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create another channel uh, and then on the delete those and then the last one I'm going to do is copy that kick down so let's have a look so, all right
right and then I'm just going to use Logic's very own very own Logic's own uh, space designer yeah oh yeah that does help you click on it right and if you remember about 10 minutes ago five minutes ago I told you about the the default setting I, I actually saved my own so what I did was um, if I go back and forward it's normally there the reverse reverb which I've called it rev reverb um, but what I'll do is I'll set it up for you so you can see um, recall the no yeah recall default right so it's um, let's listen to the reverb on its own uh, I'll just turn it on a bit so you can hear it's quite a bright one I know it's not the best example on a kick but that was there and you can turn it up so it's a lot bigger like that and what we figured out was there's a, a button here called reverse you know, credit to Alex Powell for this I think he showed me um, I'm not taking credit for this so. and then here's your dry signal and here's your reverb signal so the, the amount it reverbs so if you turn your dry signal off totally and your wets on full and that's on reverse you should get something that sounds like this is one I made earlier. Like that. So that's something that I learned and I use that in quite a lot of productions. People ask me how I get those daunting um like sort of daunting vocals to to blend together and it's it's doing that. Um into so you'd have a vocal there which would start with a, a, a vocal like that. But normally what I'd do is I'd I'd bounce it down um so I'd right click on that bounce in place bounce that in place and then you can see and then I'd cut that there with the marquee tool and just delete that and then that would um, solo that so you could hear it and then it would be like that um, and then you can EQ it or you know affect it or do whatever you want to it so you can create a good effect just from uh, the reverse reverbs in the space designer built in in, in logic uh, right cool hopefully that'll help some people and yeah the another another thing I, I learned um, it was quite recently actually this um, uh, let's have a look right so if I right right click on here customize and then there's capture recording down here I'm not sure if anyone's seen this or if you have it's uh, it's pretty cool I learned it the other week so while you're um, while you're say when you're jamming out and you've got um, when you've got a like say a piano, a piano or any sort of any sort of sound, uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's try to find. Let me find something that actually works. That I haven't lost the samples for as well. Uh, pianos and keyboards. So electric piano. So I'm sure, like most producers, when they are uh, soloed. sound ever but it's uh, it's an example um, I'm sure like if you're like any if you're like me or most producers when you're just jamming along you just play something like and you'll think oh yeah that's really good then you'll go to hit record and you play it and you just can't play it again but what logic does is it remembers everything you're doing so if you right click on there customize control and put capture recording and press on the capture recording it remembered so the last thing you did it remembers it so it's pretty good it's quite good to have that on especially if you're just jamming away and you come up with something that you probably never play ever again that's a that's a pretty good a good thing to have um, <clears throat> uh, what else is there there's uh, capture records yeah but I think that's probably about it for now I mean there is a lot more things and logic does a lot hell of a lot more stuff and there's lots of things I could show you but I think I don't want to waffle so they were the ones on my list just to show you now um, so yeah thanks for watching and uh, yeah you could subscribe to me on YouTube I'm hoping to do more of these um, but yeah subscribe on YouTube it's got music and uh, any questions just put them in the comments below and I'll uh, try and answer them see ya right now I'll get out of this thing that audio.